are listening to the Moms in Business podcast, where we get real about all the things on balancing motherhood and still having a thriving business. It is my goal that you hear from real moms, you hear real stories on mindset, time management strategies, and even the moments of crying in the shower, because we have all been there. I'm your host, Misty Shaheen, life and business coach for moms who want the freedom to live life on their own terms without sacrificing their health or family time. Welcome back to the Moms in Business podcast. I'm so excited to be back. And today we have a very special guest, Sabrina Cadini, and she is a holistic life coach. And I'm so excited to bring her on because if you know anything about my story, you know I have struggled with adrenal fatigue. Finding balance between work and family is a constant struggle and a constant flexibility. And you're always floating between one and the other. There is no true balance, but it is something that we have to strive for. It is something I'm so passionate about. So welcome, Sabrina. Hello, everyone. Hi, Misty. Thank you so much for having me here. It will be a great conversation, I'm sure. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. So can you tell us what is it that you do? Absolutely. Yes. So I do something that I am super, super passionate and it's holistic life coaching. And, you know, I can easily say that this happened by accident. I became a coach by accident. Uh, It all started with my previous career. I was an event planner specializing in weddings which is such a fantabulous job, I would say, because many people, when they hear what I was doing, they were like, oh my goodness, the best job ever, right? But, you know, the job of an event planner and especially a wedding planner because of the emotional aspect, family dynamics and so on can be very demanding and extremely stressful. Mm, Because we work during the week, preparing for the event, and then we work at the event or at the wedding during the weekend. And so it can become a 24-7 job if you're not able to set boundaries. And of course, you know exactly what I mean, right? You know, if you're not able to set boundaries between work, family, and free time, it becomes a mess. And so I realized that I loved my job so much that I was giving full attention to my clients and no attention to myself. (laughs) So I was prioritizing work and not me. And being a workaholic and a perfectionist, that that was even worse because I would never be happy with what I was doing. Mm. And so I was work, 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 work. Yes. And in 2011, my body finally started to send me signals. I experienced the burnout and thankfully minor health issues. And at that point, I realized that I needed to change the way I was working. But most importantly, I would say the way I was living. Mm -hmm. My body and brain needed a break. So after extensive research and seeing a lot of doctors and specialists who couldn't really figure out what was wrong with me, I decided to educate myself and I learned a lot about the body and mind connection, the God-brain axis. Mm -hmm. And this was a huge eye opener for me. I started to understand how our bodies are not programmed to be working and active all day and all night long, which was something that I used to do sometimes. And instead, we need to rest in order to recharge and perform better. Wow. Yes. You know, a lot of people don't do that today because they are too busy. They are in that busyness mode, right? So they don't think they have the time to take care of themselves, which is so wrong in our modern society. So basically, I started changing my lifestyle by establishing six principles that I started to follow every single day. And in just a few weeks, Misty, I became a completely new person. It was amazing. So I eventually created a system that incorporated all these elements and I established healthy habits that allowed me to achieve better goals 
in a faster time, attract even better clients because I was more clear about my vision, Mm -hmm. become more profitable, and ultimately boosting my brand even more. I was more present. I was more focused. I was more in control of my life and of my business. And I can tell you, it was such an amazing feeling. Wow. So this newfound knowledge inspired me to pursue a new career in coaching because I knew at that point that I could help others upgrade themselves in the same way I did it. So I became certified in holistic life coaching in 2013 and in brain fitness coaching in 2018. So I can say I have a higher purpose today in my life. As an event planner, I used to make people happy for one day on their wedding. But today, I help people stay happy for the rest of their lives by allowing them to adopt a healthier lifestyle, rediscover themselves, and and really maximize their talents and skills by focusing on themselves as human beings first. Mm. So this is my calling. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Let me back up because I forgot to ask you. I always ask everyone, what Mm -hmm. is your zodiac sign? I am a Pisces. Oh, I don't know if you're familiar with zodiac signs and if you can see that, you know, I'm very passionate. I am very shy. I act, you know, behind the scenes and I'm a big dreamer, Mm -hmm. but this allowed me to really achieve what I want to achieve, you know, and that gives me a great power in the things that I really want to do. Sometimes Pisces are a little stuck in their dreams and are like, oh, maybe let's do this, let's, let, let's do that. But I probably have some type of influence from another star. I don't know. I'm not very familiar with zodiacs yeah. and everything. But I think I have this big influence from another star that pushes me and really gives me the energy and make best decisions for my future, you know, which, is, which I'm yeah. very grateful about. You know? Yeah, I mean, Pisces is a healer. But they're more on the spiritual side of healing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting that you found your way into, you know, holistic life coaching. I also get the sense of maybe some strong Libra placement because Libras love balance. Oh. They also love to make things look nice. And, yeah. oh, they also love to be behind the scenes. Uh, yeah so they're very good at like putting other people first Mm -hmm. and they just like they want to make sure everything goes right they're very detail oriented but they're not necessarily wanting to be like the star of the show see you got it yeah Yeah. so plenty too you know I was acting like behind the scenes for my time so yeah that's probably the case thank you for letting me know (laughs) yeah yeah so I'm currently getting certified in life path astrology helping people align their purpose with their career path. And so I love to just look at like, what is your sun sign? Because most people know their sun sign and how you utilize that in your business. That is so beautiful. And I strongly believe in those because they have a big influence on your daily life. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm so interested. Talk to us about this mind-body connection. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, uh, this is something that I studied for many, many years now. And I um, I consider myself a student. You know, I always keep learning and learning and learning because I want to know more and really help my clients uh, more. So thanks to my knowledge and what I learned throughout all these years, I was able to create this system that is called a life work balance. And this is a little different from what people are used to think about work-life balance. You know, people always put work before everything else. And I always thought, well, why should we put work as a priority? I mean, we are human beings, not human doings. And so life should come first, you know, and that's always something that confused me for a long time. And so thanks to, again, my studies and my certification later, I was able to change the perspective and really put the individual, the human being first, you know? And so that's how I created this system, which is based on biochemistry and physiology, most of all. Life coaches can have different niches. 
They can be specialized in more spiritual areas. They can be specialized in relationships. They can be specialized in your, your goals or business or personal life. I am more specialized in well-being mm -hmm. because I think that when an individual is healthy and he has energy and focus and really is living a vibrant life, can achieve whatever they want. You know, that's okay. my, my focus, basically. And so I use this body and mind connection, making sure that my clients understand that body and brain are part of a system. They're not two separate entities. You know, they think they're stressed out. Something is wrong with their mind. No, it could be something wrong with your body. You're not eating the right foods. You're not sleeping enough. You're not moving enough. You know, there can be a lot of different things that are sabotaging basically your happiness, your creativity, your positivity, you know? So that's how I apply this body and mind connection to my practice by focusing on these six pillars that I was mentioning at the beginning that were the six principles that really saved my life, basically. And so they are nutrition, eat better, sleep, sleep more, movement, move daily, and then stress management with stress less. Uh, self-care, love yourself, and time tracking or time management, which mm -hmm. is value time. So these are the names of the six principles. And I have this program that really goes through every single area to really upgrade my clients. And a lot of them just see improvements after a few weeks working with me, just eating better foods and paying more attention to the nutrients, to the value of food, not only as some type of reward. I love this food because it's so good. But is it good for your body? Is it good for your brain? Yeah. I, so use it as a fuel, as the energy for your body and for information for your genes because it has a lot more influence for your well-being. You know, I mean, yeah. French fries, oh my gosh, they're so delicious, but they're so bad for you, right? <laughs> When you choose the better foods for you, you can see improvements in your cognitive performance and in your athletic performance. You can see improvements in your happiness. You can boost your creativity. You can be more positive, have a better outlook about life. And, you know, I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian. I want to make this very clear. I just give general guidelines mm -hmm. to let them understand what types of foods can be better. And, of course, each of us is different. So what might work for me might not be perfect for you. But, you know, once they understand what certain foods can do for your body and for your brain, then they can make the right choices, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back. Your concept of life work balance. I love that because a few years ago, I started researching the happiest countries in the world. I wanted to do my own research and mm -hmm. I found the U.S. is definitely not it, you know, Denmark and Sweden, Norway. And I started looking at, you know, what are their lifestyle like? They don't work like we work. They mm -hmm. don't work 40 yeah. hour weeks. They yeah, actually yeah. max out on like 32, mm -hmm. 35 hour weeks. And yeah. I think it's like Sweden, maybe it's Norway. They take the whole month of July off. The whole country is like closed down and everyone takes their vacations during that. No one works. And I just thought, wow, what a concept of living life and then working around your lifestyle. You know, and I think the U.S. is definitely has so much work to do in that area. Yeah. Is that something that you work with, you know, in your clients? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, my coaching clients are mostly business owners, freelancers, solopreneurs, several mompreneurs. I have, I would say, 80% female entrepreneurs and the rest is male uh, usually. And that's mostly because, you know, they have a full-time job, very demanding, many responsibilities. They're passionate about it, but they also have a family. And they're usually the caregivers, you know, and so that creates a lot more stress, a lot more restrictions about their uh, lifestyle, and they don't have the time for themselves. 
they don't have the time for their loved ones. And so that creates this perpetual, you know, the vicious cycle. The less I have time, the more I stress, the more I'm stressed, the less I can achieve at work because I keep thinking, oh my goodness, where is my life going? You know, I cannot be there for my family. And so as a result, they usually try to, you know, fit everything. They juggle family and work and they have a hard time to fit everything in their busy day. And since we all have 24 hours in a day, we all do, right? <laughs> How can we make changes? How can we be present for our family? How can we be more present for our business? And what about us? What about me time? You know, so, and so that's usually why they come to me. They come to me because they know they're missing something. They often tell me, you know, I think something is failing here. My business is failing because I probably didn't set the right goals. I probably can't focus enough. I don't have enough time to do everything. But I also think that they're stressed out because, again, their lifestyle is completely off. Yeah. And so we go back to the life-work balance concept. You know, they don't sleep enough because they have a lot of things to do. They're too busy. Their mind that just can't shut off. They have, you know, things to do at work and they sometimes bring work home. If they work from home, they keep work at home, you know. Yeah. And so they can never stop and uh, they're not finding the time for themselves, which is so necessary for our physical and mental health. So they're not recognizing that they are bound to this stressful life and maybe leading them to burn out eventually. And they are in denial mode. They're like, no, 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 that's not me. I can do everything without any problem. I just sleep three hours a night, but you know, this is what it is. <laughs> Nothing I can do. And so I help them recover that sleep that they need. Mm -hmm. at, the, at first, they're a little hesitant and skeptical because they tell me well if you want me to sleep more I will have less time for you know my to-do lists and I tell them well if you sleep more you will actually achieve your goals more. faster because you will have yeah. more energy right. and so you can sleep more and work less yeah smarter right <laughs> yeah it's so interesting because my background is I kind of fell into coaching as well you know, I was going through burnout. I had no energy. I couldn't lose weight. And I started to focus on my health and I dropped 36 pounds. And wow. I had women coming to me and wanting to know what I was doing. So I started working with women like in really foundational like habits. What are you eating? Are you moving your body? And the things that I saw, because I worked with mostly women who were career focused and they were like, anywhere from like 25 to 40. And the things that I saw was they were chronically stressed and not sleeping right. Yeah. So can you talk to us a little bit about the effects on our health that stress and not getting enough sleep can really take on us? Absolutely. You touched on two great points here. And, you know, I think sleep is the most important thing that we need to do and it's probably the most unrecognized or overlooked aspect of our well-being. I don't know if I said it right, but it's definitely something that in our modern society is considered like a luxury that we cannot afford because again we're busy. Modern society glorifies busyness. Mm -hmm. We always want to show that we're busy because it makes us look successful in some ways, right? Or we just don't know what else to do because we're always in this doing mode, right? And when we have five minutes of time, we're like, I am wasting time at this point. <laughs> I need to find something to keep myself busy. And so we forget about the being mode, which is more for us, you know, for human beings. We need to live life, you know? And so sleep has a lot of great benefits that people don't really realize. They probably studied at school, but they forgot. And doctors don't really focus on that, unfortunately. And so sleep is a regenerative, a reparation mode. It helps consolidate memory. It regulates your biological clock, which is the sleep-wake cycle called the circadian rhythm. And it also regulates your hormone production. So if you don't sleep enough, especially if you're a woman, your hormones can go, you know, yeah. out of uh, balance and maybe you're trying to get pregnant and you can't, you're not fertile again uh, enough. 
you can't sleep well because your hormones don't allow you to have a relaxed state. Weight gain, you touched on your coaching. Mm -hmm. Sleep helps regulate your weight by working with these two hormones that are called leptin and ghrelin. You probably know about that, right? The leptin hormone signals that you are full. Ghrelin hormone signals that you are hungry. So sleep helps you keep these two hormones in check. If you don't sleep, ghrelin goes up. So you find yourself to eat more. Mm. And so that's how you can gain weight even more. So if you're trying to lose weight, sleep more and you will see a lot of improvements. Again, a lot of people don't connect the two. They think, oh, I'm losing sleep. I don't have time for sleep. That's okay. I will be a little more tired tomorrow morning. I will drink more coffee. That's not how it works, <laughs> you know, right. because when you deprive your body of sleep, you can have serious consequences for your health in the long run. Not maybe in a week, in a month, but in years, it will show cellular aging and you will have a lot of problems from yeah. your performance and from a health point of view. So sleep is definitely something that I think is the most important, even more than eating. If you don't sleep enough, your body will have negative consequences. As an entrepreneur, especially if you're working from home, like it's so easy to just work around the clock and not ever close your computer, not ever shut down your phone because we're always working from our phones now and the lines get blurred a lot. And so setting boundaries was something that became very important. And now it's like, I have a 10 p.m. bedtime because I have three kids. So it became apparent to me, it doesn't matter what time they go to bed, they're always up early. And Mm -hmm. if I went to bed any later than 10 or 11 at the max, I'm just groggy, I'm cranky, I'm moody, and I really can't do the best that I can do. So true, so true. And you know how many mothers are in your situation? So many out there, and they don't think it's a big deal. Again, you know, they're in denial mode sometimes, and they think this is normal. Yeah. They think this is a normal life, which is not. It may be common, but it's not normal. So you definitely need to do something. Also, I wanted to say a little more about the benefits of sleep. So we talked about consolidation of memory. We talked hormone regulation, et cetera. But in most recent research, they have found that during sleep, we're able to get rid of all the toxins and proteins that build up when we are awake Mm. during the day. So that helps, again, your brain to be refreshed recharged in the morning and sometimes when you wake up you know, with that brain fog or headache that's probably because you didn't sleep well mm. and that process which is called glymphatic process didn't work well you know and eventually can create plaques accumulating you know they are associating with this with dementia with alzheimer's so you know see this is a very slow process that eventually can create a lot of damage when you get older. So we don't want that. We want to avoid it. We want you to live vibrantly right now. Even if you're in your twenties, you want to live well and plan for the future. So as an older person, you're still vibrant and healthy and full of energy and full of life. Basically, that's my, my goal for my clients, you know? Anyway, I think you were asking about burnout as well, right? Yeah. Which is something that nowadays everybody talks about. I think you remember the World Health Organization last year recognized burnout as an occupational uh, phenomenon yeah. because it happens mostly in a workplace environments. Mm-hmm. And I'm very familiar because, as I mentioned at the beginning, I experienced it years ago. Yeah. And I can tell you, it was not fun. <laughs> I remember when I started to feel the effects, I remember because I was a nursing mom and I was running a business from my home. So I was an in-home daycare provider. I was open from like 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And then I was nursing my daughter in the middle of the night. And I can remember at 30 or 31 years old thinking, I have no energy. I needed a nap before nap time. And I thought, this can't be as good as it gets. At 30, I should be in my prime, right? And that's when I started to look and say, this can't be it. 
yeah, something's happening, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's good because you were, basically, you made yourself aware. And I always tell my clients, you know, when you are aware of something happening to you, you are already winning because you want to take action and change what yeah. is happening and what you're doing. So kudos to you. I'm so proud that you were able to recognize that because I usually have, I would say two types of clients or three types of clients, I would say, as far as uh, burnout. So from what I've seen in all these years that I coach my client, some already experienced burnout. And so they come to me, they don't want to repeat the same experience because they know you know, with the pandemic also, I mean, stress levels are so up yes. during this time. So some already experienced it and they know the dangers. Some are completely clueless and they are, as we were saying, in denial mode because they don't think this is happening to them. They don't think they are you know, prone to being uh, subject to burnout. And some of them are maybe on the brink of burnout. So they will eventually experience burnout because their life is so busy. It's so stressful. And they feel that they're going in the wrong direction, basically, you know. But yeah, it's a pandemic, I would say. It's truly a global pandemic because, again, there are so many millions of cases being recognized every single day. And it's peaking and growing still because, again, not only for small business owners and entrepreneurs, as we were talking about, but also for companies, you know. And so employees are often subject to a long amount of hours because the company has, of course, requirements as, you know, expectations from them. And so they feel more stressed than what they should do. So I really hope that a corporate workplace will take measures and will change that eventually so that employees will be able to live a better life. Yeah. Because when they live better, they can improve their well-being and they can improve their productivity. And that means more money, more income right. for, the, for the company, right? I mean, it becomes a win-win situation. But as I was saying, yeah, burnout can be definitely avoided and it can be reversed. The important thing is that you recognize what you're going through, recognize the symptoms, which can be multiple and that can become very confusing. And then you can take action to reverse the situation. Yeah, symptoms, yeah. they can range between fatigue. It could be mental fatigue, physical fatigue. It could be insomnia because your mind, again, can't shut off. It could be anxiety. It could be overwhelm. I mean, whatever it is different from your normal and happy and relaxed state can signal that burnout is coming. In some cases, hopelessness, you know, because nothing in your daily life seems to make sense anymore, you know, or seems to matter anymore. You lose confidence in yourself. You're kind of going uh, through the motions. and Yes, exactly. Exactly. At the end of the day, you're thinking, what is all of this for? Exactly. Exactly. That could be also one of the symptoms. Like uh, there could be social withdrawal because you lose the joy of spending time with friends, with family. You don't see sense in your life anymore and uh, you might feel depressed. And also your immune system can get hit. And so you can become more susceptible to sickness. Maybe you get sick more often because again, your immune system is lowering their defense and you get more prone to sickness. So again, all these symptoms inevitably lower the quality of your work and they negatively impact the quality of uh, your life, of relationships, not only with your loved ones, but also with your clients, you know? And so that creates a horrible situation, I would say. And some people don't know what to do because they feel like caged. They feel like victim of this situation, but they don't really know where to start, you know? Also, I, I noticed that a lot of people don't really know the difference between burnout, stress, and depression. Mm. So I don't know if that happened to you at all, talking with people. A lot of people tend to put all the three in the same area. So they think they all apply to the same situation. And it's true that some symptoms overlap. Yeah. Because they can be the same, but they are pretty different. Can you tell us what are the, some of the yeah, differences? Absolutely. So if we compare burnout with stress, for instance, so stress is a natural response of our brain and our body. 
to a threat. This is all very often in our modern society just a thought. You know, in the past, our ancestors would run away from tigers because they were threatened by tigers. We don't have tigers in our cities anymore, right? Or at least we are not threatened by them. It's maybe our boss. It's maybe something, uh, a deadline or a sickness in the family. I mean, there's something that definitely is, can be life-changing or moment-changing, but it's something that we react to. And, you know, stress is not always bad. It's the way we react to it that can be bad or good. So once we respond to this uh, stress trigger, the response causes spikes in stress hormones like cortisol that prepare us to react to the threat. So it could be anger, it could be closing yourself, it could be thinking, negative thoughts, you know, everything. It could be anything depending on our reaction. Burnout, on the other hand, is a condition that is caused by prolonged stress. Mm -hmm. So it's about chronic stress. So this situation is perpetuating for a long period of time, and it's usually work-related. Okay, so it's chronic stress that is not recognized or it's not managed. If we compare burnout with depression, burnout is, again, work-related, while depression is more generalized, and it can impact our personal life, it can impact our relationships, it can have several causes that need to be addressed in order for it to be properly treated. Some cases, a specialist, therapist, or a health practitioner needs to intervene. But sometimes it's also caused by lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. So again, it could be caused by poor diet, lack of sleep, lack of physical activity. Mm -hmm. And this causes inflammation in the body and in the brain that leads to chemical imbalances in the brain. A lot of people think, oh, I'm depressed. Oh, nothing I can do. Yes, you can. First of all, you can go out and run or move, eat better, sleep more. And you'll see that your depression, once you spend some time out, with sunlight that gives you a boost of energy, a boost of positivity, vitamin D in your body, I can tell you, you will feel much better immediately. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow your depression to go away. I'm not saying that. It's not magic. But you can do different things to feel better. Yeah. And I also want to mention, you know, burnout is work-related. However, it also can come in to parents, especially, you know, in my case, I had a special needs child. And if you are chronically stressed from your child's family situation, or anything like that, and you're not having a lot of outside support, that also can cause burnout. Because, you know, we see with the cases of autism on the rise, we see these mothers who are constantly have anxiety, and worry about their child. They really don't get a break because they're always having to be on high alert, especially if a child has a flight risk or they're just uh, maybe a difficult child and they have a hard time finding care. They can't find a sitter and they're always having to be that primary caregiver. It can be really challenging to find those moments of self-care when you are having to be like that almost on all the time. So true, Misty. Absolutely. I agree. I would say 200% of (laughs) what you said. Definitely. And you know, I think that being a parent is a job. So definitely burnout can be related to that because it is work for for parents, especially if they have, you know, children that need more more attention. Mm -hmm. So definitely, I completely agree. And that's why self-care is, I would say at that point, even more precious. Mm-hmm. for parents who can't find it so even if you can find like five minutes out of your busy day use it take advantage of it you know it can be just a moment of silence in your bedroom and that's it and that helps you really reorganize your thoughts and create a sense of like rest relax and recharge you yeah. know and you can go back to your activities because again parents have a 24 7 job absolutely and it can be a huge problem if they also work you know there's no rest there's no recharge and it's hard definitely hard absolutely yeah Yeah. and you know relaxation techniques are usually what I suggest to my clients when they really have a hard time when they have a very demanding job and a lot of responsibilities with the family because again even five minutes can be a huge difference 
you know, it could be meditation, it could be yoga, it could be mindfulness, it could be, you know, mantras, affirmations, just five minutes of their time is so, so soothing and helpful. Even listening to music for five minutes, you know, it really helps to reset your brain and, and say, okay, I'm ready. Let's yes, go back. I love that. Okay. <laughs> I, I have frequent dance breaks here at the house. Because, yes, um, I love that. You know, that can, you know, especially if you're in a kind of funky mood and you're not mm. sure what's going on, you know, sometimes yeah. put on your favorite music for one or two songs and all of a sudden you're just feeling so much lighter and better and happier. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Dance like nobody's watching, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> also something that I tell my clients is to learning to, to let go. I mean, just accept it and let go. We cannot control everything in life or we cannot control everyone in life. It is what it is, right? We yeah. may have expectations. We may have plans but life happens and that's okay so we need to adapt to the circumstances and go from there you know it's all about those negativity that should be shifted to positivity right our subconscious mind is set to negative mode all the time for the most time of our day so we need to be able to rewire our brain and move towards a positive outlook which can be very difficult but it has to be done so you know thoughts come and go and you need to be more in control of those so yeah well i know you have a new book coming is it out now so the book is not out yet i ran a book fund crowdfunding campaign okay. back in june for a month and why did i do it because i wanted to raise awareness and see if there was some type of interest first of all And that allowed me to have publishers interested in the publication of the book. So I am now in talks with some of them. And it's such an exciting time because the book is about life or balance. So it talks about my six pillars. And it also shares a lot of tips and strategies on how to achieve a life or balance. And also share a lot of resources where they can get even more information like books, podcasts, experts who talk about that and and everything. And so it's more like a practical guide on how to achieve life for balance. And the ideal reader is pretty much my clients. So high achievers, small business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, they have a hard time integrating, demanding full-time job and family. They sometimes ignore, you know, foods or they don't sleep enough, they don't move enough. Again, they're too, you know, focused in their daily life. Right. They don't pay too much attention to themselves. Mm -hmm. They have a never ending to-do list. They work long hours. They can never find time for themselves. So again, pretty much what we talked about. And so the book guides them through a transformation journey. And together with my life or balance system, I also provide simple explanations and and strategies borrowed from neuroscience, biochemistry, such as neuroplasticity, what we talked about, neurogenesis, which is the ability to create new neural connections in your brain. And also I tap into the fascinating world of epigenetics. I don't know if you're familiar with the term. A lot of my clients are like, no, what is that? And basically it's a a recent field of science that studies the influence of your lifestyle choices on your health. So basically whatever you do, all the choices you make in your day, the foods you eat, the air we breathe, the water you drink, the movement you make, the sleep you have, can negatively or positively impact your Uh well-being. And so it it is, this puts you in the driver's seat, I would say, because it empowers you to make better lifestyle choices for a better life, you know? And the book also talks about my cat. You know, that's a little fun twist because I own a cat, or better yet, this cat owns me. I don't know if you have pets at all, but usually cats, you know, dogs are like loving their, you know, owners like, crazy cats are like you tell me what i have to do i'll think about it and i'll get to you right you know they have this attitude right (laughs) so cats own you but i think that pets have so much to teach us about the quality of life and so i share different anecdotes and stories where you know readers can understand how animals 
are really living better than us. They live in the moment. Of course, they're not as evolved and sophisticated like us, right. but they know how to really live life fully, which is the title of uh, the book. You know, oh. and so I share some stories about cats and what she does to make my life even happier. You know? Oh, I love that. You yeah. know, it's such a yeah. different twist than, you know, your normal life coach. Exactly, exactly. I, did, I didn't want to be a boring guy like, okay, this is it and this is what you need to do uh -huh. and try that. And readers might get bored. I mean, sometimes I get bored by reading these guides. I wanted to give, you know, some fun entertainment. Yeah. in the book and i hope you know it will be well received i hope dog lovers will love the book as well you know yeah 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 well, i love that so tell our listeners if they want to connect with you further where's the best place to do that yeah absolutely well i would say uh, my website is the best way to connect with me which is uh, sabrinacadini.com i guess you will have notes uh -huh. uh, yeah, for this podcast now. That's my full name. There you can also download my life work balance guide. It's a digital guide. So you can just sign up for updates and you'll be able to download the guide. It has a little recap about the six pillars that I mentioned uh -huh. in the episode today and some tips, practical tips that you can implement immediately, basically, just to see some changes in uh -huh. your life. Awesome. And then uh, you can also follow me on social media at uh, Sabrina Cadini. Very easy. Yeah. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. What else? Twitter. I think that's it. <laughs> More than enough. Right. That's enough, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we want to thank you so much for coming on. I love this. You know, I'm so passionate about this. And this is part of the reason why I started this podcast, because I want more moms to know that they have options of working from home and to work around their family and incorporate their lifestyle into their work. And their work can revolve around their lifestyle and not the reverse, which is what we've been taught. It's what we've been groomed to do, but it is I firmly think it is the reason why our nation has so much health problems right now. You know, heart disease and obesity and uh, diabetes is all on the rise. And I think if we could get this lifestyle piece right and, you know, realize the place that work has in our life and it doesn't have to be like the number one focus, I think a lot of our health problems will go away. So true. So true, Misty. I am so thankful for you to create this amazing resource for mothers because they need that. And as you were saying, there are options, there are solutions. So I yeah. really, really hope that more and more listeners will subscribe to your podcast. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much. Did you love this episode? I would love to connect with you and hear all of your ahas. Do me a favor, take a screenshot right now. Tag me on IG, your biggest takeaway. You can find the podcast at momsinbiz underscore podcast. And if you haven't joined the party yet, we are hanging out over on Facebook. We have a private group called Moms in Business. And this group is all about connection, community, and collaboration. So if you haven't joined us yet, please do come over and join in on the conversation.